All right, guys, so in this section, we're going to do a few things. Uh, we're going to add the sub pages to this template, and we're going to look at forms, tooltips, and popovers. Uh, tooltips is basically some text we can highlight, and if we hover over, we'll have a, uh, a nice tooltip pop up. And popovers are, are kind of the same thing, but they are much bigger. Uh, say you want like a box with uh, a whole paragraph or something like that. So it's, it's more for bigger uh, elements. So what I want to do is I want to add these sub pages in right now. And the sub pages are just going to have things that we already know, really. And I've left out uh, the additional um, elements, I guess, that we haven't gone over. So let's go to our new folder. So this is, this is where we're at right now. I'm going to go to my clean and clear folder and grab all these sub pages and post them in here and obviously you you'll find these in your program files uh, what we need to do now is, is connect all these pages if we go to our index page and we go down to our menu all our links are going nowhere so we just have to add in our pages our page links so home goes to index HTML uh, about we'll go to about.html these three links here will all go to innovate.html so I'll just copy that and we got blog HTML and contact HTML So what we need to do now is we need this this navigation on every page. So I'm going to grab I'm going to go from the top list item which has the home the home link down to the contact item. So I'm going to copy that and I might as well save this. And then I'm going to open up the other pages. We got about blog contact and innovate. So we want to paste these links in here as well. So we'll start from the home list item and go down to the contact paste that in same thing here home to contact contact all right so now we should have our navigation. So let's go to our index page. And if we click on about, we go to the about page, the innovate page. You can see the about page, all we have is this main content area with an image. We have our list, which we created already in the, in the past sections, which are on, this is going to be on every page. Uh, the innovate page, we're actually going to put a carousel up here and some things on the sides so this is just basic formatting um, let's see the blog page needs some CSS work uh, so we're just gonna have a, a title a main image we're gonna have this little small um, area with the with the date and the author name and then a read more button so all we need to do is add a little bit of CSS to fix this up and then we have the contact page where we're gonna put a map in a contact form and we'll also put a side quick contact form for other pages obviously we're not going to have that on this page on the contact page uh, one thing I want to do real quick is I don't want this gray background and what's given us this border effect in, in the background is the well class uh, and by default it's gray I want to make it white so let's open up NetBeans and I'm going to close all these out just to make sure I have the right files. So we want to go to our, our custom CSS file. And I'm just going to go right under the padding classes. And I'm going to put a class of well. And we're going to set the background to white. And we'll give that an important tag to make sure that it overwrites bootstrap.css. All right, so now we have the well, it's white. And this is on every page, too. 
All right, so the blog page, we need to fix this up a bit. And all we need to do is add a little bit of CSS, which I'm going to get from the main file. Let me just open this with uh, Notepad++. And I'm just going to copy. Um, just find it here. All right, so blog. We want to grab the blog image, the blog read more, and this small. So I'm going to copy those. And I'm just doing this to save some time. And I'm going to paste this stuff in above the footer. All right, so let's see. We have a blog. The blog image uh, is going to have margin, some border, padding. I'm not going to go over every little thing. Uh, the read more is going to display as a block and go across the whole page. We'll have a hover effect. And then this small here is where the date and the username is. So we'll add some padding, give it a background, a border. Um, so we'll save that and reload. And see how the images are going out of their container? That's because we're not using flexible images. What we need to do is add a width. Uh, to 100% of its container. So that's pretty easy. You would just go to blog image and put a width of 100%. And it's as simple as that. When we talk about flexible images, this is basically what we mean. Because if we reload, the smaller images stretch out, the larger images go within their container. So that looks nice and neat. You can see we have our read more buttons, which go across the screen across the element. Um, all right, so that looks good. Now the next thing I want to do is form. So if we go to our contact page, uh, we need a form. So let's go to bootstrap, getbootstrap.com, go to components, and I'm sorry, CSS, and then down to forms. And I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab the uh, Inline, I'll just grab the first example. Okay, let's copy that. And we want to put this in contact. And you can see I've marked where we want to put our, with the things we're going to add. For instance, we're going to put a map here. This is going to be the contact form. So I'll paste that in and do a little bit of formatting. Whoop, actually, you know what? I don't want to be in. I don't want to be in Notepad. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go back to Contact. Okay, so Contact form here. All right, so we need to change a few things. Let's copy this email field. Each field has a class of form group, so we're going to add one up here that says name. And the IDs and stuff I'm not worried about because this isn't going to be a functional form. Uh, instead of password, we're going to have message. And that's not going to be an input. It's going to be a text area, which I can grab down here, right here. Just throw that in there. And we don't want this file input or this checkbox. And then our button should just say send. All right, so let's save that. All right, so now we have a nice contact form. Uh, now what I want to do is add a map up here, which is pretty easy if we just go to Google Maps. And I'm going to type in my office address. Alright, so to get the map, we just want to click on the link button and then copy the iframe. And we're going to put that right here. And we want to take some stuff off of this. We want from the end small tag to the. Uh, I'm sorry, let's. We want to take the small tag and we just find the right here 
from here all the way over. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to grab the wrong one, so I'll start from this side. I hate how it does this. All right, so we just want to get rid of the small tags. And now we need to change the width. Uh, if we save this and, and take a look, we want it to go all the way across. We also want a border. Uh, we can't do percentage widths in line like this. So we're going to get rid of that. And we're just going to give this a class so we can add some CSS to it. We'll give it a class of GMAP. You can keep the height at 350. And let's see, let's go down here. And we want to style iframe dot GMAP. And let's give it a width of 100% border, give it a gray border, one pixel, solid, border radius, 10 pixels, and some padding, we'll do four pixels. All right, so if we save that and reload, we have a much nicer looking map, and we have our form. So it's a pretty nice contact page. What I want to do now is add the quick contact side in the sidebar. So let's go to, we don't want it on the contact page, obviously. Uh, let's go to the about page. And you want to scroll down to where you see quick contact form here. And I'm just going to grab, I'm actually going to grab the code from the, the contact form we just created. So I'm going to grab from form to form and paste that in right here. Okay, let's I actually want to put a well around that. So div class div class equals well and I'm also going to add a class called gray well because I want this to be gray in the background. So this is this is not a, a bootstrap class, I'm going to create this. Okay, so we want the, the, to end, we want the div to end right after the form. Alright, do formatting. Okay, so in CSS, let's um, create a class of gray well, and I'm just going to give that a background of gray, light gray. So let's reload. Okay, here's our form. Um, let's put a heading there. Put an H3. Quick contact. And that gray weld didn't seem to work, so we have to add the important keyword it's in, a, in order to overwrite the, the standard well tag. Alright, so now we have a great background, heading, that looks good. Alright, so let's add that form again to, we want it on Innovate. Actually, yeah, we just want it on About and Innovate. So let's copy from here to here. And we're going to go to Innovate. And I'm going to paste that in right here. All right, so now we should get that on Innovate as well. All right, so that's forms. Now I want to get into tool tips. So if we go to the Bootstrap website and we go to JavaScript, I believe, uh, we have tool tips. Now, how this works is we'll, we'll highlight some text with a link, and when we hover over it, you can see it has an, a nice looking tool tip. And these are pretty easy, it's pretty easy to do, uh, and let, you can do it on all different sides if you want. Uh, the usage, let's see, so the markup, actually that's not the markup we want. We want this here. All right, so we get a, a link with a attribute of data toggle, which needs to be tooltip, 
and then the title uh, the title is actually the text that will be in the tooltip and then this is the text that you need to hover over so let's copy this actually let's just copy the first part just the the opening a tag and we're going to choose some uh, text on our home page I want to choose some text in one of these boxes so I'm going to go to my index HTML and let's see so we have our blue box so this is the first blue box um, let me just highlight some text here I'll say from here and so I just want to paste in that that line we copied and we'll add the ending a tag here okay so let's do an, let's do another one we'll do one in the next box we'll, we'll say from here so I'm going to paste that in and we want the ending tag and these need to have IDs so let's see we'll say this one will have an ID of tooltip1 okay and in that tooltip we'll just say this is the first tooltip and this one will give an ID of tooltip2 that go all right tooltip 2 so we'll just say this is another tooltip okay so let's save that and if we reload you can see uh, you can't even see this link we need to add a little bit of styling we want to change the colors and you can see it's not working yet all it's working is the standard browser tooltip which isn't that great looking. Uh, we need to add just a tiny bit of jQuery, which we'll do in a second. But first, I want to style those. Um, so in our CSS file, we're going to say ID tooltip1. Um, and then we also want tooltip2. All right, and actually, we want the we want the color to be white, and I I want an underline, but I want it nice looking. So we're, we're going to use a border. So we'll say border bottom. Um, we'll do a, a dotted border, one pixel, and that's also going to be white. And we want to add a little padding to the bottom. Let's say two pixels. Okay, so let's save that. All right, so that looks better. I don't want the the line when we hover over it though. So all we have to do is let's copy this, and let's just add hover. And we want to do text decoration. None. All right. So now that line's gone. So the last thing we need to do is is add the little bit of jQuery. So we'll go all the way. I'm sorry. We want to be on our index HTML page, and we want to go all the way up to the head area. And after the the last um, bootstrap. JS script. I'm going to put in another set of script tags. All right, so if we go to the Bootstrap website, all we need to do is grab this here. Actually, I'm sorry, we want to grab one of these, and we can choose show which will have the tooltip showing when we go to the site but we don't want that we want the hide that way it's not showing you have to actually hover over it for it to show so let's copy that 
Now here, this is going to be um, jQuery, so we want to make sure the document's ready. So we're just going to put in uh, document dot ready, and we want a function. And we need to put our ID here, so tooltip one. Copy that. Tooltip two. All right, so let's see if this works. Reload, and there's our tooltip. Okay, so that looks a lot better than the standard browser tooltip. All right, so the final thing I want to go over in this section is popovers. So let's go and check that out. Uh, so we can add small overlays of content like those on the iPad to any element for housing secondary information and they give us an example down here if we click on this button we get this nice looking uh, pop over so we're gonna do this on the map page I'm sorry on the contact page I'm gonna have a little button here in the middle that says get address then we can click on that and we'll get the pop over effect alright so let's see what the, the code looks like okay I'm trying to find the HTML for it you know what I don't even think they provide it let's look in the source code and we'll get the HTML from that actual button let's see click to toggle all right, so he, we have this button, and let's copy the link, the A, A tag. We'll copy that. Uh, let's see. All right, so now we'll go to our contact page, and we want this to be right under the map. So we have our iframe for the map right here. Let's put the button here with some uh, BR tags after it. So we'll put that right here. We're going to change the text to get address. And here we'll put an address. This is the data content. Uh, what is that called? I'm having a, a brain fart right here attribute <laughs> sorry about that so we want the data content attributes gonna have what we want in the pop over so I'm just gonna put the address okay and we also have a title attribute so I'll just put address and we have this data toggle attribute of pop over and then we have the button classes here I don't want the button danger I want the primary which will be a blue button alright so let's save that so here's our get address button okay so we need to add our jQuery let's see So I'm going to grab this here. This, is, this works just like the tooltip. Alright, so we're on the contact page, so we have to open up our own script tags. Add this in here. And we need, we need to add an ID to the popover. So A I D is going to be address go back up here change this to address alright let's save that so now if we try this again alright we're still not getting it for some reason alright so that's not much help uh, 
actually instead of hide let's put an animation I think that that works no um Let it go. Let's actually change this to a button because we have it as a link right now. All right, class looks good. Okay, you gotta change this to a button. Let's try it one more time. Okay, it's still not seen, it doesn't seem to work. We have our jQuery. Oh, um, we didn't open up a, a document ready block. Sorry about that, guys. Let me just grab that from the index page. Let's just grab this. And that's this is happening because it's trying to do it before the document actually loads. Okay, so this should work. All right, so there we go. You click it, you can go, come back. Nice fade effect. Uh, so that's it. I mean, that's that's pretty much the basics of forms, tool tips, and popovers. Um, pretty easy, not much markup at all. So in the next section, we'll be going over models and tabs.